down to my office anytime, and Denise will hook you up. Hi, how you doing, everyone? First off, I'd like to thank everyone for me finally hitting 500 subscribers. It's not exactly where I want to be yet, but it's a start. It's a, a milestone, I should say. Thank you. Uh, you guys have all made that possible. I appreciate everyone viewing, and I really appreciate everyone's positive comments all the time. I would like to thank uh, quite a list of uh, some of my favorite channels and my favorite people that I've talked to. Um, first off, I've met two people on here, Jeffrey Briscoe and William Esperman. You know, I met you guys through you guys viewing my videos and you lived close to me, uh, only a half hour away, maybe a little longer. So it's cool that I've actually met people through my fishing videos. But I'd also like to name a few people that uh, always comment on my videos. I watch theirs. They watch mine. We always uh, conversate or whatnot. Uh, I have to say my, my first and favorite is Jerry Ralph, also called Fish for Fun. Uh, if you guys haven't checked out his channel, I, I uh, would like it if you would. Uh, he's a very informative old school fisherman he's probably been fishing for 50 plus years he always knows what he's doing uh what i like about his videos is he makes it feel like you're really there sitting in the boat with him um, out of all the fishing channels he's probably inspired me more than anybody has um for number one because he never does the same thing back to back he always changes up what he's doing like for instance, he goes for crappie this week, walleye the next week, uh, setting jugs for catfish, snagging spoonbill. He always does a wide variety, and he goes to a wide variety of places. But uh, what sets him apart, I think, from most people is that, like I said, he, it feels like you're really there fishing with him, even though you're just at home watching it on the television or, or whatever you're watching it on. So, uh, Jerry Ralph, thank you and, and for your support over the past few years. Um, second guy is, uh, I, I call it chaos. I don't know how you say it. It's K-A-O-U-S fishing guys from Clarksville, Tennessee. He also does a very wide variety of fishing. Me and him have, uh, became buddies on here. I uh, also suggest you check out his channel. He goes for blue catfish, carp, uh, panfish, white bass, yellow bass, bluegill, uh, always does very well and uh, very good guy so give him the support if you can and check out his channel as well uh, the rest of these channels you can all you can always check them out but uh, most of these next people is because you always leave positive feedback and uh, you also have very good videos as well uh, one cast one fish thank you for all the comments you've always given me fat robs fishing west point lake willie for the kids fishing and that's with a z for the kids fishing river monsters and demon dragons very good channel fishing with paw paw dave thank you so much sir west lovelace you always you always leave comments i really appreciate that live and cut bait fishing with jerry and max uh your dog cracks me up sir very very good fishing channel always get something you never know what that man catches catches a wide variety of fish and he, he's very experienced osney fishing adventures that's o-s-n-y thai pig patrol and fishing with lou i couldn't name all these but these are just you know the ones that i've I basically went scrolled through my comments from the past six months and that's the names that always appeared in there more than uh, others so there has this some that I left out so I apologize for anybody I left out now what I want to now what I'd like to get into is I'm going to give you guys some fishing advice that you never hear from anybody else and that is recognizing the peak times throughout the annual year I'm here to tell you that there is not one month on the calendar out of all 12 months that 
is each month provides you with an opportunity for a peak time for almost every species of fish. Uh, most people only pick up their fishing rods from mid-April and they put it away during when deer season hits or before, sometimes after Labor Day, but usually before October. Well, I'm here to tell you that some of the best fishing is during those other months. And each month provides you with an opportunity for a peak time to go after a certain species. And once you learn them peak times, then you once figure them out, you need to figure out the best area. Where can I go get the biggest ones of that kind in my area within an hour and a half, two hour drive? All right, I'm going to start with January because that is the first month of the year. January, it's not very great for most species, to be honest, but there is two that you can go after in January, and that is farm pond bluegills. The reason is, when you fish in January in farm ponds for bluegill, almost all the fish you're going to catch are the big hog bluegill. Okay, and it's just, you can use several tactics, but, you know, just a worm and a hook on the bottom or small jigs. You can also, during January, of course, you got your walleye and sauger. And that's pre-spawn, because walleye and sauger spawn in February. So that's when you're going to get your your pre-spawn sauger and walleye. All right, when you go to lead in the February, February, and forgot to mention this, but I am from southeast Missouri, so these times and months and species are not going to be the same for everybody. So I'm in southeast Missouri, so that's what I, what I know best. So according to where you live if you live in michigan or florida of course your your seasons are going to be different and your peak times are going to be different but the only way to really learn this is through years of experience or by studying it very intensely anyway back to this february february around here is when two fish spawn believe it or not they spawn way before any other fish i'm sorry three kinds you got your pickerel which are very isolated and they're only in about three river sheds in the entire state of Missouri. But pickerel start biting really well in February. And you got your walleye and saugers. Most walleye and saugers will spawn in February. So, and it can, it really, a lot of it depends on the weather. It can be as early as early February. And it can lead all the way up to the first or even mid April. It's a very wide spectrum. But you're. When you fish for them in February, you're either going to catch the big pre-spawn fat hogs or they're going to be spawning and biting like crazy. And February is the time to go after them. You can also catch some crappie in February and they're also going to be very large usually. And they're going to be, they're not going to be in school so much, but they're going to be very isolated and very big, the fat pre-spawn females. All right, when you get into March, March is kind of a strange month. It's very windy. The weather is very unpredictable. If I was to go for anything in March, it's still going to be the walleye and saugers. And then toward the end, about the the, the mid March to the, the the end of March, that's when the crappies start biting. And that's your big pre-spawn crappies. They're not going to be in that very shallow water typically yet you know in the in the three to four foot deep of water they're going to be out deeper but you're going to catch some really big crappie and like i said that depends all on the weather once in a while you can catch some early white bass at toward the end of march as well and you can start catching a lot of spotted bass toward the end of march if it's warm warms up you can catch them spotted bass on spinner baits White bass will typically be the males if they are biting toward the end of March. It's going to be the, the smaller males. All right, April. April is probably my second favorite month of the year behind October. I'll get in October later. But April, pretty much everything starts biting. Not quite everything, but about half. I'll go with half the species. Once April hits, that first week of April, that's definitely crappie season. I don't care what anybody says. Actually, the first two weeks of April, I don't go fish for really for anything except crappie. Then first two weeks, crappie go absolutely nuts in most places. It, definitely in, in the entire Midwest. 
Um, a lot of that also depends on the weather. My general rule is once you get three warm days with three warm nights in a row, that's when it really takes off. You can have three warm days in a row where it gets 70 degrees, but if it jumps back down in the mid-30s at night, that water's just going to go up and down, up and down. It's not stable. you got to have those three warm nights where it doesn't frost, but more specifically, where them nights stay in the 50-degree range. And that water just warms up like that. That really takes the whole season off to a really kickstart right there is when you have them first three warm days. Once about the middle of April starts, more specifically where I live, I... I I want to say April 10th, but by no later than April 14th or 15th, white bass. For the next two weeks, nothing but white bass. Then white bass is a very short season, no matter where you are. What the white bass do is they come out of the large lakes and large rivers, and they go up the tributary arms in search of clear water for their spawning habitat. That is one of my favorite times of the year because they're very easy to catch. It doesn't take a lot of rocket science, so to speak, to catch these fish. So mid-April to the end of April, white bass, white bass, white bass. Everything is usually biting by now, but that is the one fish that, that year after year I consistently go after. The month of May takes on a whole new... Uh, uh, several species come to life in May. You got your bluegill that start to spawn. You got your flatheads that start to get active. You got your shell crackers that start to spawn. Your warm mouth, your large mouth bass. Uh, you can catch your post spawn crappie. The rough fish don't get real active yet. They start to to a little bit, but not completely. Also, mid-May to the 1st of June, smallmouth, smallmouth, goggle eye, smallmouth, goggle eye. They start spawning. Sometimes a little later. Sometimes it might lead into June. So May, in the month of May, I prefer the first half of May. I like to go after the panfish, the bluegill, the shell crackers, the war mouth. And also the, the bedding largemouth. Uh, Mid-May to the 1st of June, smallmouth, goggle eye, largemouth. Okay, once June hits, June, what I like about June is uh, you still got a lot of the stuff left over from May. But you also got, that is when you can definitely start wading streams when that those cold streams become warm enough that you can get in and just walk in them. The smallmouth become fully active. All them fish in them streams, the goggle eye, smallmouth. Uh, by June, channel catfish are spawning. Uh, the first half of June, you still got the later flatheads that are still in spawn mode. Uh, so, uh, blue cats. By June, all your rough fish are usually pretty, starting to get pretty active. Your carp, your gar, your drum. Largemouth, June is a good month to start topwater fishing. Still got some bedding largemouth in June. Even though some of them start in May, there is some, a, lot of, a lot of largemouth that still spawn in June. You can start throwing those buzz baits on uh, sight fishing for bass and looking for beds. You still got your bluegill, your red ears that bite through the middle of June. Okay, July. July is a month I don't really care for much, but there are some good days. In July, you got every fish by July is active. The downfall of July is by then you got many hundred degree days and you got a lot of your places where the water gets so warm that a lot of the fish become inactive. As a typical rule, July crappie become an inactive, largemouth pickerel. And it's not all the time. It depends on where you're at. In streams that are cold, the fish will they stay active throughout the whole month of July and even in August if the water is cold. But your smaller farm ponds and your, your rivers and streams that are really slow moving and shallow, a lot of them fish are going to turn into a negative feeding mode during the months of July and August. During July, I prefer to fish larger rivers and larger lakes that remain cold 
July, you can still wade those streams for smallmouth and dogalike. July, you can also fish for all the rough fish. Drum, carp, buffalo, gar, channel cat, still very active. Yeah, it'd be a good time to go to the Mississippi River. Fish below dams where that has the uh, fresh water coming through, creating a lot of oxygen, keeping that water cold, providing food for those fish. July, you still got your top water action for largemouth. You can still catch a lot of species. It just, it's going to be hit or miss. August, August, probably my least favorite month of the year out of all of them. I'd have to say August and January. August, it's hot and miserable. You got your bugs. You got your hundred degree days. You got your humidity every day, hot, 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 dry. You got your drought. Like, for instance, right now, it's really dry where we're at. Everything's super low. The fish are totally negative. They're not biting. It's hard to figure out fish. If I was going to fish for anything in August, it, it's really tough. You almost just got to play guessing games. But it's almost pretty similar to what I said for July. Larger rivers, colder water. Uh, you know... You can fish for pretty much anything, but you're going to have your bad days and your good days. During the months of July and August, I will say this. It's better to get out there in the morning when the sun is coming up. Because during the nighttime, that water has had several hours to drop 2 to even 3, 4 degrees during the night. Because when you're going in the evening, that water has been heating up all day. And you're going to have a better chance of catching those fish than the first two hours in the morning from 5.30 to 7.30, even up to 8. That's when the fish are going to be the most active during those two hottest months of the year. Then September comes along. September, one of my favorite months. That's when everything starts biting again, especially after Labor Day weekend. The nights start getting cooler. All the fish species start biting once again. September, it's good to go for anything. Your walleye and sauger start slowly picking back up. Your white bass start feeding again. Your smallmouth and largemouth, they start getting very active again. They know it's starting to get cold, but not really cold yet. But in September, it does start to get cold at nighttime. You'll notice when you walk out in the morning on September mornings, it, it can be as low as 50 degrees. Uh, and the days start getting a little milder as it leads into October. September is a very good month. Uh, and it's for September, I would have to say the flatheads start picking up. That's a good fish to go for, but it's just an all around good variety month. Blue cat, carp, flathead, smallmouth, white bass, crappie start fight, uh, biting again. It's really, for me, September is just a variety month. It's when I just go for everything all at the same time. Yeah, my favorite month is October, bottom line. Biggest mistake fishermen to make is putting them fishing poles away for October and start deer hunting. No, no, no. That is when the best fishing is. I don't care what anybody says. I always catch, I do my best crappie fishing in October as opposed to spring. When they fish, no, it's starting to get cold. And by October, when I say it's starting to get cold, I'm talking about those last two weeks when it's right before you get your first frost, then leaves start falling off the trees, and it starts getting really chilly at night, but it don't qu quite freeze, but it gets down to like 39, and it still gets 65 during the day. Them crappie, walleye, white bass, largemouth, smallmouth, every fish. I don't care what kind they are, they all they all start packing on the pounds because they know they got to put on that meat for the winter time. There is no better month for than October for flatheads, for blue cat, for white bass, for for uh, for smallmouth. My personal best smallmouth came from October. Almost all my personal best fish were from either April or October. But there's something about October that makes it easier to catch them, and that is low water. You're generally going to have lower water during the month of October than you are in April. April, the fish are easy to find for one reason. is because they're close to the bank, because they're in search of their spawning grounds. But you're generally going to have flooded waters and turbid, uh, muddy water. But in October, that water is low clear 
and it's easier to target the fish because they have less places to hide. All right, then November. November can vary from year to year. I've had years where it's already freezing cold by Halloween. There's already frost. Uh, the fish can turn off and turn on day by day. You can be catching them one day in November and go back the next and there's nothing. But November is a very good month for crappie still. And even bass, bluegill, flathead, all of them still it just very much depends on the weather. I've like for instance, two years ago it stayed warm all the way till Thanksgiving before we really got a cold day. And I was catching crappie through the entire month of November. I was also catching walleye and saugers. So during these months I kinda the rough fish kinda slow down, the guard drum and carp, they kinda tend to shut off. But your bluegill bass, smallmouth, crappie and walleye and very seldomly a white bass. Your pickerel bite again. Your red ears and all them. They still bite as long as the weather cooperates. Like I said, it's just very unpredictable weather. It's kind of like March. I compare November with March. It can be very windy, very cold, all night long, and then it gets nice during the day, and then it's just up and down, up and down. All right, then you got December. December's kind of one of my least favorite months as well. December, I basically just fish for walleye and sauger. I'm not saying anything else you ain't going to get to bite, but that is the main two fish that will bite during cold weather, so I typically go for them. I'll catch crappie on accident. You might get a really warm day in December. If you get a two or three mediocre days in a row, you can probably go out there and catch some bass. You can catch, still catch those farm pond bluegill like I was mentioning. You're typically not going to catch any catfish during those three winter months of December, January, and February. You can catch, if you're going to catch catfish, it's generally going to be channel cats. You can catch the other two, but it's very tough. And you're going to catch them in what they call scour holes on the Mississippi River below the dikes or in the very deepest holes of a stream. Uh, December is, December and August, my probably in January my three least favorite months well that wraps up the year I hope this was helpful to you you know keep in mind learn those peak feeding times for each fish and then you got to go where the biggest ones are in your area if you keep going to a place where the biggest bass you've ever caught is only two pounds research do your research and go to you know where can i go catch a five or six pounder where can i get that seven pounder and go when you know their feet where the peak times is like i said each fish has its season you're not going to go out and catch largemouth bass all year round if you're if that's all you're fishing for you know you got to learn that you're you might be missing out on your flatheads you might be you might have missed out on crappie completely and some of them fish only have a season that is their peak is two weeks long like i said for white bass the red ear and flathead very short season it's about typically three weeks to a month long if you're doing something else you're missing out on that opportunity if you're deer hunting you're missing out on uh a chance for some of the biggest crappie of your life which is uh october um Gets one you know, like I said, there's fish to be caught all year round. Don't put that pole away. All right, I hope this was helpful for you. I appreciate the 500 subscribers. Thanks to everyone for your positive feedback. And hopefully I'll have a video for you on Sunday night. All right, take care.